Welcome everybody to another QB Power Hour. Today's topic is new tools for the accountant in QBO. We're very glad to have you joining us today. As you know, we're using Zoom now. And so if you have some questions for us, please type them in the Q&A box and try not to use the chat box. And Dan and I will try to monitor those and answer those verbally as we can throughout the webinar today. So please try to use that Q&A box instead of chat. That makes it easier for us to just monitor one central location. But we're very glad to have you joining us today. My name is Michelle Long and I'm the owner of Long for Success. I've been a trainer for Intuit for the past 12, 13 years, 13 years now. Author of five different books, those are all available available on Amazon, so you can check those out if you're interested. Um, if you're starting your practice now, you might want to check out the How to Start a Home-Based Bookkeeping Business. I know, uh, you know some people are now starting a, a accounting practice, so check that out on Amazon. Um, Co-host of QB Power Hour, and glad to have you joining us today. Check out the Facebook group there for QB Power Hour. That's a great place to continue the discussion after this um, event today, after this webinar. Dan, go ahead. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Dan DeLong, owner of Dan Witt, and former Intuit and technical support trainer and writer. Um, a new project I'm working on is uh, is the chief cre content creator at uh, School of Bookkeeping. So uh, coming up in today's um, QB Power Hour um, and, and upcoming, we, we, we have today being the uh, QB uh, accountant tools. Uh, so some of the new tools that came out, if you, if you haven't taken the recertification exam, um, they're in there too. So uh, you can supplement uh, today's webinar with uh, redoing that in the in this uh, certification exam as well. And we have uh, coming up <clears throat> uh, next next week, we'll have um, QBO Advanced. All QBO Advanced can do, Erin uh, Walsh Dyer is gonna join us and she's gonna um, highlight some of the, the QBO Advanced features. Uh, then after that, we'll have uh, Webgility be will be joining us in simplifying accounting in uh, with e-commerce. Um, and then we'll go back to the QBO Advanced uh, with case, uh, case studies with uh, some industry leaders. We're going to have a panel discussion, so it's going to be uh, a round table, uh, but no table, and it's not going to be round. <laughs> but <laughs> we'll have a panel discussion with uh, some industry leaders. Um, and then the 21st, we're actually looking to, to relaunch or, or redo a, a niche nuance, this time with, uh, with legal. Uh, so if you have uh, some legal clients or looking to get into legal, um, that would be a good, good one to join us. And then we'll back to uh, QBO Advanced uh, with the roadmap. Where is it going? So we've talked about where it's been and, and how it's, it's gotten up to this point. Uh, where, is it, where is it going uh, for, for that? Um, so we talk about uh, you know, QuickBooks tips, what's new, what's troubleshooting, uh, plus as well as some, some marketing um, pricing and, and apps. Um, and then here's some links to our, our PDF of the slides, uh, as well as the recordings are, are all on Michelle's YouTube channel, as well as a podcast. So uh, if you can't, <clears throat> can't join us, there's definitely some opportunities uh, to join us uh, or to watch on your own schedule. That's right. So all right. today, Go yeah, ahead. Go no, go ahead, Dan. Go <laughs> um, ahead. So, so today we're going to talk about a couple of new bookkeeping and accounting tools that are only for accountants. Uh, and this is going to be just for QBO. So uh, there's a month end review uh, as well as a business uh, performance. Now, if you're looking for desktop, uh, that we did do a, a accountant tools uh, QB power hour. Uh, so we provided the link for it there. Uh, so if you're really uh, focused on, on desktop and, and you want to understand some of the accountant tools in desktop, uh, just go ahead and watch that uh, and review that QB Power Hour. Yes, client data review tools. All right, Dan, you want to launch our first poll? What yes. version of QuickBooks are you using? As Dan said today, we're talking about QBO, some new tools that are available for accountants in QBO, QuickBooks Online. Um, what are you using? And if you're not using QuickBooks Online, or if you're not a member of the ProAdvisor program, you should go ahead and join the ProAdvisor program. program. It is free for QuickBooks Online. I can um, put the link on where you can go to sign up for that if you haven't signed up for that yet. It is free for QuickBooks Online. Um, so I encourage you to join that. As part of the ProAdvisor program, you do get um, QuickBooks Online Accountant free. Um, so you'll have access to the tools we're talking about today. 
bit.ly, bit.ly slash BAP underscore join. So I just put in, and I did it to- You put it in the chat. I know, because- <laughs> You're violating uh, your own rule. <laughs> the chat is for us. <laughs> Hold on, let me get this correctly. P-A-P, because I did it to just us, Dan, underscore, all lowercase, P-A-P underscore join. I can't talk and type at the same time. <laughs> all right, bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash P-A-P for Pro Advisor Program underscore join. And that's where you can um, join that. And those of you asking about CPE, we don't do CPE any longer. If you need CPE, continuing professional education credits for CPAs and certified bookkeepers, if you need that, go to qbtraininginvents.com and we've got that link on the next slide here. Okay, so uh, sharing the, the results here, both um, is leading the, <laughs> leading the back with uh, 64%, uh, followed by uh, QB online. So, 30% of our, our audience is, is using specifically uh, QuickBooks Online. So uh, majority of, of our folks will, will definitely get something out of uh, today's Power Hour. Yes, well, very good. We're very glad to have you joining us there. Um, okay, and somebody's asking a why question. Why did Intuit so <laughs> radically increase the price of our ProAdvisor annual subscription? We don't answer why questions. <laughs> We I'm don't the, know. <laughs> yeah, I'm the can. I'm the can guy. So can QuickBooks do something? Michelle is the should. Should it do that? <laughs> but we never ask her. We never answer why questions. And we're not. We're we're not into it, folks. Um, we work with Intuit, but not for Intuit. Right. So that would be a good question for Intuit folks. <laughs> yeah. Which okay. they'll be joining us uh, next week. So if you want right. to ask that why question, we can bring that back that next week. <laughs> very good. Very good. All right. So let's talk about the client overview that we have available first. And on each one of these, I've got slides that you guys can look at as a reminder for you. Um, but then I'm going to be popping into QuickBooks or Dan's going to be popping into QuickBooks to show you this. So first of all, as a client overview, I wanted to show you this one as a reminder. So on the left hand navigation bar, you'll see overview. And then that first overview tab. And later in the session, Dan's going to go over the business performance tab. So let's go ahead and pop into QuickBooks. And this is a fictitious company here and a fictitious firm. So things are not going to look normal because it's just stuff that we use for training and stuff. So under that overview tab that I had mentioned, first of all, you can review the company setup, which subscriptions they have for uh, QuickBooks, what payroll subscription they might have, is sales tax enabled or not, any third party apps that are integrated with that subscription. You can see that information. At a glance, you can see the banking information here. Whoops, I clicked twice on it, where you can see all the bank accounts, the bank balance in QuickBooks, what unaccepted transactions have been downloaded, and they um, they haven't they didn't accept it or whatever. And then the, what are the unreconciled transactions? Um, so they might have gone ahead and added or matched them, but they haven't reconciled yet. So these are sitting in for review. These are in the reviewed area. And then what's the last date that they reconciled? And you can see this sample company. We got stuff here. We haven't reconciled this for four years. So, you know, keep in mind that this isn't a real company, but you can take a quick review to see at a glance where things are and stuff. But this is the great area that I wanted to talk about because today's all about tools for us accounting professionals to make our lives easier when we're working with our client files and reviewing them for errors and mistakes and things like that. When we're talking about a review today, I am not talking about an accountant review, like CPAs do compilations, reviews, and audits. This is not an official formal review like a CPA would do. This is where we accounting professionals are reviewing the books for mistakes and errors and things like that. So it's not a formal CPA type of review. So just keep that in mind. So under common issues, this is great. I love this tool because we used to do this manually each month or each quarter or each year for our clients when we're reviewing and cleaning up their books. We always want to look at undeposited funds. If there's seven of them sitting out there, that may or may not be okay. They may legit have seven checks sitting in the drawer that they haven't taken to the bank yet. Or you may see a huge number here. Like one time I had somebody that had $300,000 of stuff sitting in undeposited funds because things were never 
going in and out like they were supposed to. If you review the undeposited funds account, you can see a bunch of these are reconciled out here. Somebody's actually reconciled it. But what you want to do is look through and see, are they checked off as going in and coming back out? Let me go down to the very bottom. No, there's still somebody actually reconciled the account. But you want to look for check marks so you can verify that things are going in and coming back out because that's how undeposited funds is supposed to work. What happens a lot of times is they don't follow the right workflow and things go into undeposited funds and never come back out. So you wanna monitor that because you need to clean that up if they haven't done it correctly. I've got a video on my YouTube channel from years ago. It was on desktop that I made it with desktop, but it still applies to QuickBooks Online on how to clean up undeposited funds. Also Actually, look, yeah, I, go ahead. With the, when you do a, a deposit, that's when QuickBooks actually reconciles that for you. So oh, okay. When, Thank so you. So when you make a deposit, you know, it goes into undeposited funds as available. Uh, then when you make that deposit, it actually puts that R in there, uh, in there for you. So well, if you, you. Um, if you looking at it, you know, if you're looking at what's unreconciled in undeposited funds, you should see the three, the, the same same ones that are waiting to be deposited as unreconciled transactions and undeposited funds. So that's just kind of how that works. Thank you for that <laughs> clarification. I love that. So that that's great. We do want to monitor, make sure they're using undeposited funds correctly and teach them the proper workflow. We also want to review have things gone into uncategorized assets, income, and expenses. That happens from the, where they review those bank transactions, but they don't assign it any account and so it goes into uncategorized review your agings and see if you have a lot of agings do you need to write off some invoices or follow up and figure out what's going on with your open bills and opening balance equity should be what what should obe be opening balance equity zero, zero <laughs> right we shouldn't be putting things in there. So if there's a balance there, you need to go investigate, find out what happens so that you can fix that. And then also, this is great, negative asset and liability accounts. Have you ever seen somebody where they have like Visa and it's, an, it's down in the liability section and it's got a negative balance? Or they have a savings account with a negative balance. So when, when account balances are negative of what they should be, you want to investigate and find out what's going on. If I go look at a balance sheet and I see fixed assets and I see the cost is a positive number, accumulated depreciation is negative, and that's okay because it's supposed to be negative. It's when accounts have the wrong balance that you want to be concerned and check them out. So this little overview area is a great place where you can start kind of doing a review for looking at things to seeing how things look. But then we have what we really wanted to share with you is the new, relatively new month end review. And again, so you can see how it's, a, it's called like a bookkeeping review. This is not an official CPA type of review, okay? This month end review tool is awesome. I love it. I'm so thankful for Intuit. So here, and you can see it's beta, so they're still working on it. So I encourage you over here in the upper right corner, see where it says feedback. Send into it your feedback. Say, I would like to see this. Can it include that? Please do this. So send them your feedback. You can change the period of the review up here by editing that if you'd like to. I'm looking at it January through April, which is the previous um, month end date. Um, so transaction review, any open issues. Are there a, a missing payee? If there is a missing payee, that's going to show up here so you can investigate and fix it. Also, any uncategorized things that we just saw in the overview tab, you'll also see any uncategorized transactions here in open issues. Did they download something and post it to uncategorized income expense or asset? Those will show up in here as well. So you can click directly on that. And it's going to take you into that transaction so you could fix that as needed. But here's where it's really great. Look at these additional items here. And Dan, I think we need to launch a poll question. I jumped yeah. right into it because I was so excited. <laughs> <That's> so excited. <laughs> I did get so excited. Let's go ahead and launch that poll question because I, I just love these tools that Intuit is creating for us accounting professionals. Yeah. So what I think kinds that is of tools right. are you using for task management? Uh, are you using spreadsheets? Are you using some kind of project management software, the tools directly inside of QuickBooks, or just are you going by your gut? Uh, I've done it so long that I just, I know. <laughs> 
And somebody was asking back where I was showing um, the undeposited funds and how they were marked reconciled. Somebody wanted to know if they're all reconciled, how come there were seven there? Well, I didn't show the second page of those transactions. And plus, these companies are ones that we trainers use. We enter all kinds of crazy different things. So things often don't make sense. Like you'll see too, like under payroll, we pay payroll all the time. We never pay our payroll taxes. We'd be in jail if it was legit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so so you'll You're see things. I know you'll <laughs> see things that don't work right just because it is a sample company. So don't get concerned about that. Um, and I like this too, Rich. Hi, Rich Kane up in Chicago area. He says, as accountants, we hate the opening balance equity account. You'd think by now and two, it would eliminate this box when entering something new. Rich, I hear you. And I wish they would because what happens is somebody sets up a new customer and they put, oh, well, you know, I just did some work for Dan and now he owes me $500. So I'm going to put an opening balance of 500 and it posts it to opening balance equity. Instead, you should create the customer and then create the invoice. Um, so yes, I wish that would go away as well. Keep sending Intuit feedback. And Dan, when it comes to talking about tools for task management, do you want to mention the work tool oh, yeah. we have? Yeah, so if you haven't checked out work in QBOA, that is a great way to kind of tie all this stuff together. Uh, because one thing, it allows you to delegate to other people. Um, but you can create your own tasks and projects and and and, and Michelle's going to talk a little bit about what you can do in the, the month end review, um, but you can delegate and, and create your own uh, workflows and then uh, put dates to it um, in addition to, you know, going into this month end review. So uh, always going to check that out too. Uh, so in the uh, sharing the results here, uh, spreadsheets are, are leading the pack here. Um, I, I didn't think that would be the, <laughs> the top one, but uh, knowing some accountants and how much they love Excel, I can see that actually being the, uh, <laughs> the top one here. But tools inside of QuickBooks is also um, right up there. Pro other project management software, because um, you know, sometimes the things that are in there just aren't exactly fitting what you need, and sometimes you need to go outside of that. And a lot of uh, a lot of experience out there as well. Just twenty two percent gut feel. <laughs> and um, Dan, somebody says I thought they were abandoning QBOA work. I haven't heard of that. Yeah, and if it were, we couldn't tell. We could neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Okay. Um, and somebody, so a couple of people have said, why would I not have the month end review showing? You do need to be in QBOA. So go through QBOA and open a company. You have to open a company. If you're on your client dashboard, you're not going to see it because it's pulling data from a company uh, data set. So you have to open a company. Okay. And when I tried to go into Craig's design and landscaping from QBOA, when I tried to go into that sample company from QBOA, I didn't have access to it in the sample company, even going through QBOA, where you have other accountant tools. So I'm not sure why that is. But if you go through QBOA and open a company, you should see that. All right. Are we done with the poll there? Yep. And a lot of people are having difficulty getting to the, uh, uh, to the handouts. Um, on the emails that come out, you know, from Zoom, from the webinar, uh, the, the link, the short link is, is right there. So if you do need to, to grab the, the handouts, I, I don't know what's going on live here today, but, um, but it's there. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, it's a whole folder of everything from, from 2020. So you should be able to, to access it and, and download whatever uh, slides you need uh, and handouts. Uh, yeah, we all love PDFs. <laughs> and, and we can always post the link in the Facebook group after the fact. So don't worry about that because a lot of what we're doing, we're showing you. Um, so again, you can see I'm in QBOA. I have a company open here, Larry's Landscaping. And that's where then I can see that month in review. Okay, so let's look now at those additional items. So I love this to do's here. Things that you should be reviewing. Check for transactions without a receipt. If you require your clients to have a receipt for absolutely everything, maybe it's a nonprofit organization. So you can look for um, if there's transactions with no receipt, look for personal transactions that they may have gotten mixed in there. And always, always, always encourage your clients to open a separate account, whether it's a bank account or a credit card account, open a separate one for business use 
only. They can open, if they're a sole proprietor, they can open a personal account, but just use it for business purposes only. Don't commingle those funds. But we do want to review for personal transaction. Review for loan payments. You want to go in and you can look at the loan payment account, that liability account on the balance sheet. If you don't see any payments going in there all year long, they've been posting it. Like, let's say they have a truck loan. A lot of times you go look at truck expense or car expense on the, the P&L. That's where you're going to find the loan payments. They don't know that they're supposed to split them between principal and interest. A lot of times what accounting professionals will do when it comes to loan payments and depreciation is set up a monthly recurring journal entry. Now, with a loan, you and I both know that based on that amortization schedule, the interest rates vary every single month. So a lot of times what people will do is they look at the amortization schedule, say, what's it going to be over a year? What's the balance going to be next year? Divide by 12 and go ahead and have that a recurring entry um, for those loan payments or at least use recurring amounts for those. You could set it up as a bank rule so that it would automatically apply to the principal and interest accounts. Then at year end, you adjust to actual, to the actual amortization statement because you might be off a few pennies due to rounding differences. So review for those loan payments. Also, we already talked about reviewing your undeposited funds. If there was any cash transactions that they didn't record, check on that. Talk to the business owner about that. Getting those bank statements. Review for fixed assets purchased. That wasn't on here. I added that one on here. And some of the other people may have added some of these other ones. I love that you can add things. So I might want to add check depreciation to see check depreciation expense was recorded. Go in and look to see, and you could put the details in here, you know, make sure entries for depreciation were made, you know, whatever. You can create your own to-dos on here to help you make sure you do everything every month. So I think this is awesome. And you can keep adding things on here as you need to. Um, so it's a great tool for us to make sure we're getting the work done. So first we review things, we clean things up. We may wanna come up under our accountant tools as you're reviewing things to be posted correctly and stuff. You may need to come under reclassify transactions and use this tool to review things to see were things posted correctly. Do I need to move things that were personal into the owner's draw account, things like that. So you can use that reclassify transactions tool to review them and reclassify and fix them all at the same time. So, and also if you identify things that need to be written off, don't forget we have that write off invoices tool, um, but pay attention when you use that tool. It's not always appropriate in all situations. But I'll after beware. you- <laughs> yes, yes. It, it base, yeah, and I'll I'll just remind you if they um if they they have closed trans transactions that need to be pay, written off from a closed prior period or sales tax payable was involved, you'll want to go through and do a credit memo instead. So you use that tool to identify the invoices you need to write off, but then you'll want to do a credit memo so you can control the date of the write off and can control the sales tax payable so that it gets adjusted. Adjusted. That's covered in the advanced training materials in module three. So you'll want to go back and review that. And if you're not ready for the advanced test, you can still access that, um, the training materials. So after you do your transaction review and cleaning up some of that, then we want to go into that account reconciliation. And again, make sure things are reconciled. One of the things that I just want to remind you here, you can review the status of um, when they were last reconciled and stuff. If you have things like employee advances or retainers or things that are not a bank and a credit card account, don't forget you can and should reconcile other balance sheet accounts. So if you had employee advances where, you know, let's say Dan needed a thousand dollar advance and I give him that and now I'm withholding it from his paychecks, I want to keep reconciling that so I can see when it's all been paid back and you can stop that payroll deduction. Um, customer, so customer deposits, customer know, deposits and Great. retainers. Yeah. So mm -hmm. some of those other accounts, you'll want to reconcile those as well with a zero, um, zero balance so that you can reconcile them and make sure they're okay and clearing out as well. Then you've got your final review tab over here. 
where you can go through and again, take a look at some, you know, the balance sheet. And again, you're looking for unusual and unexpected balances on the balance sheet, your profit and loss, look at your agings, review the unpaid bills. You might want to add on here to um, monitor open invoices. Um, because when you look at that open invoices report, review for unapplied payments or credits. So somebody might have a balance out there showing up, but it might be that the payment wasn't applied to the invoice. So maybe you want to always review that, you know, whatever it is that your client tends to make a mistake of, go ahead and add to that there. And then you can see, you've got a review here, what's going to pull up that report for you. So you can review those things. So all of these again are under the month end review. And I think it's a great tool to help us when we're doing some of this for our clients um, throughout the year, don't just wait till month in or year in to do these kinds of things. You know, if you can try to get your client on a monthly basis, that's awesome, or at least a quarterly basis. So you're cleaning things up throughout the year, not just waiting to year in. And somebody says, I missed where I find it. How do I find that? Okay, I am in QBOA in a client's company. So I have to have a client open. I'm in Larry's landscaping and then under accountant tools, very top here, month end review. I love this thing. And I just love that Intuit's investing in things that make our lives easier. So hopefully you guys like that as well. Um, somebody says, I see the month end review tool in QBOA, but not in another client's QuickBooks. Are you still going through QBOA? It might be that it hasn't been rolled out. Dan, are they still rolling this out? Um, do, it it do very well know? could be in uh, in in the month. And, you know, since it is, as you did point out, it is a, a beta. Uh, you may see it in some right. clients and, and not the other. But as long as you are an accountant, mm -hmm. uh, you should you should have that on 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 your clients uh, on your on your when you go into your clients. Right. Um, we we were discovering as we were playing around here that it's not in the sample company. Uh, yes. <laughs> and it's not in your books. So like if you go into your books in the, in the, in the QBOA, it's not in there either. So you can't do your own review, uh, but, you, <laughs> but you can, uh, you should be able to do it on, on any other, any of the clients. Now, if you don't see it, then it may be just not available for that particular cluster. But um, we are, everyone that we looked at, I mean, uh, any client that I went into uh, seemed to have it, but um, yeah, and somebody I'm... else, uh, somebody else noticed that, um, this is this is only for U.S. Uh, so if you have a a, a, QB, a, a Canadian uh, version, I don't think it's available just yet in in the Q Canadian QBOA. Yeah, I just checked three different client companies, and it was in all of them. Like, let me go. I just was in there. Let's go and look. I, I just checked three of them, and it was there. Maybe I I would think maybe it's not in self-employed, but I haven't ever checked self-employed, so I'm not sure about that. Yeah, um, I mean, there's there's no reconciliation even in right. Uh, I mean, you can't even reconcile in in self-employed. So yeah, all, all the companies yeah. I've just checked, it has been in. So um, again, you need to be going in through QBO, QBOA. This is an accountant tool, not just logging into your client's QBO. You always should be going in through QBOA with your own accountant user login information. Okay, Dan, how about we? transfer it to you and you right. start showing them the business performance um, because that's a pretty amazing tool for us to help with our clients as well. Okay, I'm gonna launch a poll first while we're doing that. Uh, so how often do you have planning meetings uh, with your client? Uh, maybe you're too busy putting out fire. So uh, you're, you're in the urgent important <laughs> quadrant where you're just doing that uh, or maybe monthly, quarterly, annually, or it's just not in your scope of work. Uh, so let me go ahead and share my screen while you're doing that. All righty. Okay, should be seeing my screen here. Yes. And of course, everything that was Zoom just uh, got covered up by what I was sharing. <laughs> I'm going to stop sharing for a second here so I can put it in the right place. 
All right. And I will try to answer some of these questions. We have lots and lots of you all, hundreds of you all on this webinar with us. And it's just Dan and I. So we're trying <laughs> to answer all of your questions. But remember, join us in the QB Power Hour group after the fact. Um, and some of you are helping each other with the chat which is great, but there's so much there. Now I can't monitor it all, so that's okay too. All right, so we'll go ahead and end the poll and share the results. Uh, looks like quarterly is the most common uh, option for having those um, regular reviews. Um, so that's really what we wanna talk about with, with business performance, because this, this is a great tool uh, to be able to have those regular planning meetings uh, with your clients. Um, there, uh, again, it's, it's a QBO, a, sorry, my cat is joining us. <laughs> <laughs> so he may jump over me in a second here. Um, but, uh, business performance is really nice in that it's, it's real easy to understand. Um, now this is only available as the accountant, um, and it also is available in QBO advanced. So, um, it, you don't have to be the accountant to see, uh, the business performance. I was actually working with a client, uh, and, uh, and I was going to show him this, and I didn't realize, I forgot that it wasn't, it was only an accountant only. Uh, so I had him go to, uh, go to reports or overview, and it wasn't there. And he said, oh, uh, that was, that, that's not fair. <laughs> um, but um, share screens, and I can send this to him. So uh, it's, it, it really allows you to, to, to build that value added service that, that you build or that you have as as accounting professionals uh, so the key metrics is the first section here um, it is really easy to to kind of understand because they color code it for you so green is good red is bad um, and you can uh, compare the current period uh, versus uh, versus the prior period and it will just show uh, income cost of goods sold uh, gross profit expenses and net profit uh, all at the top there. So that's kind of like your, your dashboard, you know, your speedometer, and, you know, so you can get an idea and, and, and show them, um, you know, just at a glance, how they're doing. Uh, another area is, oh, so if you have any questions about uh, financial ratios, uh, Michelle did some great, um, great webinars a, a few years back about profitability ratios and liquidity and cash flow ratios. So you can review those uh, if you need to, and then there's then there's trends. Uh, so down below the key metrics is going to be trends, and those are going to have uh, some gross profit margin, net profit margin, income, expenses, uh, accounts payable days. So that some of the things that you you noticed on the overview tie right into uh, to these graphs and and trends. Uh, the nice part about this is that it looks at the last twelve years. I'm sorry, 12 months and compares that to the prior year. So you can see and use this as a, as a starting point to figure out where is your, where is your client's business cycle? Uh, maybe it's in the middle of the year. Maybe they have busy seasons and not so busy seasons. Uh, so that is going to be a great place for you to, you know, invest in advertising or, you know, make those recommendations as far as when, uh, when they need to do those things, as opposed to, uh, just doing it by gut feel. Um, every trend is going to have a, uh, a hover over. So how that, how that is, is calculated uh, will have the, um, uh, you can hover over that and then uh, it will give you an idea of, of where that is actually coming from. And then there's also going to be a link to a, an associated report. So if it is something that deal specifically with profit and loss, like this gross profit margin, you're going to get those uh, figures from the profit and loss. So you can launch the, re the report right from that area uh, and then drill into those numbers to, to validate that. Uh, if, uh, like in this case, we wanted to see, uh, well, what happened in October? <laughs> you know, there's a big dip here. Uh, so you can go into the profit and loss, run it for that period, and then, um, and then see where those numbers came from. You know, maybe there was something that they knew happened uh, a year ago. And Dan, could I make a comment too? Sure. 
Um, when you are using this and reviewing things, um, like Dan just said, and comparing things from this year to last year stuff, sometimes when there's unexpected and, and out of ordinary events that happen, remember, you can put notes on the financial statements. So it's a great idea. Like, let's say if there was a hurricane or if there was a flood or it was exceptionally hot or there was road construction and the road was closed for two or three months or whatever, put notes out there, you know, sales lower than anticipated due to X, Y, and Z. Expenses higher due to air conditioner broke, you know, whatever. Put notes out there on those financial statements to help when you're doing a comparative analysis like this to remember why is there such a huge fluctuation from last year? And you may say, oh, okay, now I know. It helps you to explain these things. You may think you're never going to forget. Like you may think we're never going to forget closing down from coronavirus, right? But you may forget some of the specific dates and things like that. And so it, it doesn't hurt to document these things because, you know, one year, two year, three years from now, you know, it helps to have those notes available for you. Yeah, my uh, same client that I was, I was showing this to, he, um, he changed uh, the way he was doing business with the, the postal service. Uh, and it was a huge uh, revenue drop uh, from October to November when he actually did that. But he was actually, um, you know, including some more in his cost as opposed to just seeing it all in revenue and then showing it up in, in expenses. Uh, they would give him, you know, just the difference. So it was, it was, it was understandable to see that and, um, but that's a good point to actually make a note of that because, you know, if he shows that to, uh, to a prospective buyer because he wants to sell the company, uh, they, they would need to explain that. It's like, well, what happened here? <laughs> now, on the, um, on, the, on the trend, you can hover over each data point and it's going to give the, the detail of what that, uh, what that number actually is uh, so that you can validate and, and see what those, what those numbers actually are. Um, but really using this business performance with your, with your client, you would use this as a way to review you know, past trends. So this is kind of like the conversation uh, point. So when you have that uh, quarterly or monthly or annual review, you use this as a, as a conversation starter. It doesn't necessarily mean, okay, well, this is what we, you know, this is what you did too bad, so sad, right? I mean, because you look at a, at a, at a, a car, you know, the, 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 the windshield is so much bigger than the, than the rearview mirror. Uh, but this is your rearview mirror. So this is where you want to set goals and then use that to, to check your progress as you're, as you're having these continuing conversations uh, with, your, with your clients. Um, and then you can export this. Uh, so up at the top uh, in the upper right uh, is an option to export it. It automatically creates it as a PDF. Uh, so you can then just save that and, and share that with, with your client. Um, it, it is, uh, you know, each, whoops, each report uh, or each trend will have each data point uh, plotted out as well. So you can uh, see uh, that particular time period and um, what the last 12 months was and whether that was a, a plus or minus from, from before. Uh, so I have, um, whoops, over here. Uh, so this is uh, some live data. Uh, I just went into the QBOA uh, and the QBOA uh, does have the business, business performance in here. Uh, so very little data in this sample company, uh, but you can see uh, again by hovering over these uh, these areas, you can get um, where that number is calculated. Uh, there also is uh, so we have gross profit margin, uh, the net profit margin, uh, income expenses, uh, account payable days. So again, we tied that back to uh, the bookkeeping month end review. Uh, we can see the the days that it takes to get paid or make our payments. Uh, and then current ratio and quick ratio. Again, uh, if you need further explanation as to what these are, but this is really the health of the business. Um, you know, if you had to liquidate everything, how would you be able to pay that off? Uh, and, or and those those video links to prior power hours talked about the details of these ratios and explained it more in depth. And so for those of you that want to go back over that and stuff, listen to those previous ones. 
um, you had the link there in the slides. And I just post posted another link to the slides. So hopefully that will help some of you that said you couldn't get the link to work. Now, um, some companies, uh, Sam uh, does a uh, had a question in here. Some companies, and this is really where uh, QBOA is 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 leaping uh, ahead of desktop. Sorry, desktop, but um, mm. industry standards. Um, you know, this is the 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 cool part of what Intuit is able to provide uh, insights into into you. Um, actually, I did have a client here, a customer here. Just gonna go in here. I was looking at his earlier. Once it goes in. This is and this is new. So um, on this uh, on this screen, you can choose the industry, um, and then you can edit that if if it's there. Uh, if it's available to put in, then you can put the industry benchmarks. Um, you can choose uh, what industry he's actually uh, they're actually in, and then that will give you an additional uh, line to kind of compare uh, how how that business is doing across all of their businesses like that. Um, and then again, this is, this is really where QuickBooks Online is, is really taking some, uh, taking the advancements because this is allowing you to take that data. Now, this is only relevant for good data, uh, but, and then there's, there's criteria that they use, you know, to be able to put that data in there. Um, so not just by somebody saying that they're in the motion picture uh, and video production industry, it, there's some quality and um i think um michelle was that in that was in qb connect when they were talking about um the the accuracy and efficiency score uh, so yeah. that's something that they're going to be using right. uh, to be able to qualify the data that's that's in here so it's not just anyone's data flowing into here and it's all anonymous so it's you know you know if you're not if you're concerned the, about that sort of thing <laughs> the the other thing that's so so fabulous about being able to compare yourself to industry averages is a lot of times these businesses don't know you know what percentage should i be spending on payroll or should i be spending on advertising or on supplies or whatever and especially if it's a new company they don't even have last year to compare to you know so comparing to industry averages it can help them with budgeting as well as evaluating how they're doing um, compared to the industry averages. And it's a great conversation to have with your clients. And, and this is where they don't understand this stuff, but we do, and we can help them with that. What can they do to change their numbers to address their shortfalls? You know, if they're not meeting industry and averages, what can we do to help improve and things like that? So, and it's being able to see it right there on these charts and graphs is awesome. And uh, several of you are asking about getting these reports to show and share with your client. Dan's going to show you in a little bit how to export them. Yeah. So we'll just jump right into that. So here in the upper right, you would just uh, click on export. Um, as soon as I do that, uh, it will download it, uh, put it in my downloads folder so I can create an email. Um, we were looking, uh, somebody uh, put in a question, can this report be inserted in the month end management reports? Um, that's a suggestion, uh, but we were trying to figure out how to do that and we weren't able to, to, to realize that during, uh, right, right before, but yes, that would be an awesome ad to be able to put that in your management reports uh, so that you can send out. Right. So like, like Dan's saying is, you know, your management reports, you can get in a Word doc and or a PDF. This is going to export as a PDF. There are tools out there that will allow you to combine PDFs. Like I use Adobe Acrobat, but there's other tools. So if you Google combine PDFs, you could then combine. So you could have your management report and attach this to the end of it if you wanted, or put this at the, I'd probably put the management report at the beginning because you got your title page and all that stuff. Yeah. So this is what the uh, the export report actually looks like. So it breaks down each uh, each trend um, and then gives you data points as well. So you can uh, go through that with with your client. So anything else that we want to. Uh, I, I couldn't remember. Uh, sorry, let me go back to the slides, actually. Well, and another thing, Dan, is at the top of that in the key metrics, you can go ahead and go into the slides. At the mm -hmm. top of that, the key metrics, I love the color visual. The ones that are good are green. And you notice 
look at the first one. It's um, under income. You see 130% increase, and that's green, and that's good. Cost of goods sold is a decrease, but it's still showing as green because we decreased our cost of goods sold. It's still good. So just saying something increased doesn't mean it's good or bad. You have to look at relative to what it is you're looking at. So the visual is really helpful here. Is it good or bad, green or orange? I, it, I wish it was more of a bright red, but green yeah. or orange um, <laughs> will tell you whether it's good or bad because you can't just look at up or down. You need to understand it in context, whether it's good or bad. So I love the color visuals up there. I think that's yeah. helpful. Yeah, it's great for just getting an idea as to where this conversation is, is headed. Um, and so that you can drill into those types of things and, you know, maybe even include, you know, if you wanted to, you know, the expenses in this case is the, um, is clearly the, the, the one that increased the, for the bad. Um, and then you can provide that report alongside of that. So you can drill into that. And then again, have those, have that conversation where it's okay. Um, what do we need to do to move forward and, and maybe take a look at some of those expenses? Where did those expenses come from? Um, were, were they, um, was it because there was, you know, an outside uh, factor that you didn't know of? Um, so those, that, that's a great way to start uh, having that conversation and then having these reviews eventually, you know, uh, routinely, uh, will allow you then to monitor how these how these things are actually actually going. And Dan, I just want to share a story with some people to tell them how important it is to be monitoring these things. So this was years ago when I had a client that had a sandwich shop. And if this was, you know, where I was doing the monthly bookkeeping and I'd give him the monthly books and he'd, you know, I'd say, hey, Charlie, hey, let's talk about some of this stuff. You know, I noticed your gross profit declining. Yeah, yeah, you know, I'm busy. The freezer broke and I got to deal with that. And he'd open the drawer, throw the financials in there, close the drawer and move on, right? Next month, hey, Charlie, I'd like to talk to you about your gross profit margin. It doesn't look good. Something's going on. Yeah, yeah, so-and-so called in sick and so-and-so's out and I'm busy. I don't have time. Opens the drawer, throws the financials, closes the drawer, moves on, right? So it was months before I got this guy to listen to me, right? This was what was, it's so frustrating as an accounting professional. And now I think I do a better job of, hey, sit. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm a little more forceful. But anyway, when we, when we got looking into it, um, the gross profit margin is declining. The gross profit margin is made up of sales and income and your cost of goods sold. So either our sales aren't high, our, something's going on with our sales and they're declining. Well, no, the volume was still pretty safe. Do you have employees that are giving free meals to their friends when they come in? You have teenagers a lot of times working in these places. Are they giving away free food? Are they, give, are they giving somebody extra large and charging them a small or a kid's meal? You know, so is there something going on with sales? or cost of goods sold. Is that increased because your suppliers increase the prices? Maybe you need to increase the prices you're charging. Maybe you need to look for another supplier. Maybe you need to try to renegotiate your terms. Um, do you have more waste? Are people doing things wrong in spoilage and they're not taking care of the food properly? Do you need to address that issue? Or what we had going on, we had two guys taking cases of meat out the back door and they had Ooh. been stealing for him for months before he started listening to me and looking into this. These ratios can help you monitor what's going on. And you have to start asking questions. Why is the gross profit margin deteriorating? What's going on? What could it be to identify the problem and the issue so that you can address it? And the sooner you address it, the better. You don't want to wait months while they're stealing from you or while people need to be retrained because there's excess waste from the food or, you know, whatever the issue is, the sooner you address it, the better. And this is where, you know, if, if we are advising our client and talking to them and monitoring the, for them, it can make a huge difference in their business. Half of these businesses are going to fail, especially if they don't have an accounting professional. We can truly make a huge impact in their business. And this tool i just love it because it can be such impact so impactful when we're working with our clients so that's just one example of many of of how this stuff can help us that's an awesome story um now somebody put asked where do i change the industry so that's if it's available if the if the industry is there i mean you you could mm. probably you know if you're if you're looking at this with multiple clients some may have this uh, and some may not but the industry is going to be um, here in the middle here, and then the pencil uh, just to the 
just to the right of that. And when you click on that, if I were to click on it, uh, then you can just type in, um, let's see, it's a retail business. Uh, then you're, you, know, you can just type that and then the smart search will come in uh, for every other uh, associated business that would have that in it. And, and Dan, when you get done with that, could you also show mm -hmm. them how to get to this again? Because we have some people oh, yeah. saying they can't get it, they can't find it. Yeah. Uh, so that's going to be under overview, you know, when you're in a client and then uh, business performance. If you just happen to click on overview, then you can also click on the tab as well. So uh, business performance is going to be there. If you are using a client that is using QBO Advanced, uh, it's going to be available from, there'll be a sub menu in reports. Uh, so if you go into there and then there'll be a sub menu for business overview and anybody can access that with, uh, you know, with the sensitive reporting or the company act, company admin access, not just the accountant in QBO Advanced. Um, and another great question, Dan, that we should talk about, how would this work if they keep AR in another program? Should we journal it just for the report? So if you're telling me they have accounts receivable in another program, that means they have like a third party app or they have some other program that they're using. If that, if you're talking about accounts receivable, that goes along with sales, that goes along with deposits. So somehow you have to be getting that recorded from that third party app into QuickBooks and we talk in the advanced training module three about doing a daily sales summary where you can manually record those things to get them into QuickBooks. So you'll see information out here. But then the other thing is you probably want to work on getting an integration. There are tools and apps that can allow you to integrate that third party app or tool that's that you're using for sales, integrate that with QuickBooks. Um, so that's something to think in mind and keep in mind too. Yeah, I mean the the information that you're going to get out of this 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 tool is going to be based on the information that's in QuickBooks. Um, so you know the adage of garbage in, you're going to have garbage out. You know if you don't have that information in there, or if you're you know using daily sales summaries, that's going to skip over accounts receivable altogether. You know so however much detail that you want to put in to QuickBooks is going to be how much detail you're going to be able to get out um, out of it. Um, you know, and, and again, you may, you may find that this tool doesn't fit your needs. Uh, you may need to use some other third party that combines the two uh, to be able to get those, uh, those dashboards like QVinci or something like that, that, that could actually connect, you know, those things together. Mm -hmm. And then Dan, we also, somebody asked, is there a way to change it to the cash method? And then things I want to say about that is, a lot of times, if your clients are cash basis for tax purposes, first of all, they're not truly cash. A lot of times they're usually modified cash or modified accrual. But the other thing is from a management perspective, because what we're talking about here is more management reporting. And that's what they need for their business is management reporting to know what's going on. And so you probably want to look at these things on an accrual report, even though they might be cash basis for tax purposes, you'll want to look at these ratios and these reports and things like that on an accrual basis. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. Yeah. Yes. Some of the, some of the cash basis reports in, in QBO um, aren't what you expect them to do, uh, expect them to be, especially if they're using things like inventory and things like that, that the, those reports um, don't look the way you would hope them to. And so that's a good point. You know, looking at things to make plans uh, is best on, a, on an accrual basis. Yes. So um, another thing is I put a link in there uh, in the chat, something called bizstats.com, B-I-Z stats.com. And I'm pretty sure in those... Um, two webinars that we gave you the link to. I'm pretty sure I talked about it in there as well. But bizstats.com allows you to go pull those industry averages for free yourself. They're like a year old if it's free. Otherwise, you got to pay for it. But it's still very relevant, very useful information. So where Dan was showing you to look for the industry, if you don't see your particular industry, you can go look out there. And at bizstats.com, you can actually put in whether it's a corporation or whether it's a sole proprietor and things like that. So you can do it by size or entity type in addition right. to the industry. So that's a, a useful resource out there as well. Okay. So we're coming in for a landing here. <laughs> Uh, so last last poll is simple enough. Did you learn something new today? 
And if I could launch it, right? There we go. Um, <clears throat> so um, somebody asked, while, while, while you're going ahead and answering, uh, will we get a copy of this program so we can review it later? Um, yeah, you can, you can always go to Michelle's YouTube channel. Uh, they'll be up there. Um, we're actually streaming it live, uh, assuming nothing broke in the feed. Uh, so it'll be available there right away. Um, I'm going to trim some of the stuff off of it a little bit later so we don't have the awkward silence at the beginning and the, <laughs> and the end. Uh, but yeah, you, can, you should be able to watch it uh, right away. Uh, there's the podcast as well. Uh, so, we, you know, you don't necessarily have to review, you know, join us live. Uh, you can always do this on, yeah. on your schedule as well. And Dan, somebody asked, can you run this report by location? You know, when you're looking at those um, ratios, it's company wide, but that would be great if we could filter and look at the ratios by class or by location or by customer mm -hmm. job, if you're using jobs or projects. So when so you remember, this is still beta and it's still a yeah. V1, if you will, it's something new, send that feedback into Intuit and tell them, I would love to filter by class or by location and things like that so that you can keep submitting your feedback in there. Um, the other thing I just want to point out too about monitoring those ratios, if your client has a bank loan, and especially now, given the current situation, <laughs> a lot of times when they have a bank loan, it does have loan covenants. That bank loan may require that they keep a quick asset ratio above one. It may require their debt to equity ratio be you know, below two, or it may require this or that. You can monitor the ratios to make sure they're in compliance with their loan covenants. So that's another service, you know, that you can be offering to your clients is, hey, we will mo monitor your KPIs to ensure compliance with your loan covenants. Um, so you might want to look into that as well um, and kind of check that out. Awesome. Somebody else said it would be great to be able to pick custom dates. Yeah, so send that feedback in for, um, for Intuit. As you have ideas and feedback, please send that into them. Awesome. Well, 98% of you learned something new today, so that's awesome. Yay! So some upcoming events. Uh, again, you can always go to QB Power Hour uh, to review uh, also these, uh, you know, the, those links for being able to, to to go to the podcast or the, the, the webinar archive, uh, but uh, coming up, we're you know give the first Tuesday of every every month for the next three months is going to be all about QBO Advance. So next is <laughs> what it will do. Uh, so we're going to have a, a little deeper dive into the QBO Advanced features. Uh, so we'll probably touch on this again because this is uh, the business performance is is something that QBO Advance will do. Uh, we're going to have uh, simplifying accounting in, in e-commerce with Webgility uh, at the end of the end of June, uh, and then more QBO advanced uh, panel discussions and the roadmap. Um, and then if you need CPA credit, because we don't do CPA credit anymore, uh, going into the qbtraininginvents.com uh, and you can register for, uh, those are all webinars now, right? So. Yes, we have webinars every month. I'm getting ready to jump on one here in two minutes. <laughs> so okay. yes, there's ongoing <laughs> webinars every month as well as a virtual conference every month. So if you need CPE, that's a great place to get it. Plus there's a lot of great training there other than just certification training. There's other great training topics as well. So please check it out and register and join us at qbtraininginvents.com. And those of you that joined us today, thank you very much. Very glad to have you all joining us. Dan, thank you so much. I appreciate it tremendously. And uh, oh, I hope, every, time. <laughs> hope everybody is staying safe and staying sane. <laughs> um, <laughs> we can't lose our minds in this unprecedented time. So stay safe and healthy, everyone. And thank you guys for everything. Thanks, Dan. Thank, thanks for joining us. I hope you have a great day.